Hello and welcome to another episode of Evolve by Erica, the podcast. I am your host, Erica Polsonelli, and I am honored to hold the space and be here with you today talking all things spirituality, ascension, 5D, coming back to who you are meant to be on this earth during these times. So welcome and thank you so much for being here and doing this work. It is really powerful stuff and so necessary. So today we're talking a little bit about what the F is going on in the world and a little bit about the Aquarian age, the age of information, and really being able to ascend, be your best self during these times, and to really understand um, how much is happening on the planet. So come on in. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about the Aquarian age. It is one of my favorite things to talk about. So I want to start by sharing what I spoke about last episode and how for a while, um, I mean, it felt like a while because it's part of my job, air quotes, but um, for for a few weeks, I just didn't want to post on social media anymore. I felt burnt out. I felt like there's so much information. I felt like there's so much access to so many things. And what did I have to say? What did I have to share that had to be said? You know, it felt like everything's being said. And obviously this is a limiting belief, but it was a place that I went to and without judging it, um, I honored that space and a really big piece of being able to honor that was understanding that this is a side effect of the times that we're living in. And whether you're a creator or not, you are most definitely a consumer. You're listening to this podcast. And I just want to say, I'm so grateful in this age of information that you're choosing to consume this information that I'm sharing with you because there are so many creators out there. There's so much information out there and I'm honored that um, I'm someone that you come to to hear and listen because at times it could feel super, super overwhelming. And I wanted to share this um, for a few different reasons. I So the age of information is a time that was predicted back in the 80s and it's something that's really spoken about through the kundalini teachings and it is all about um information overload which is what we're experiencing and as you've seen for the past few years you can find an article you can find information to support any opinion that you have and that goes for the person with the other opinion that opposing opinion they can find an article they can find information to support their opinion and we're living through a time the aquarian age which is a great awakening we have we are being pressured there's so much pressure within us and around us and from pressure we know rocks turn to diamonds and that's really what's happening here but we need tools to navigate the Aquarian age. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So as I was saying, it's it's been predicted that during the Aquarian age, there would be um, a pandemic, there would be possibly disease, there would be so much information where you're overloaded, you're burnt out, you don't know what is right, what is wrong. And I want to use air quotes for both of those words because um, we are living through a very polarized time on the planet. There's a lot of right and wrong. There's a lot of, um, oh, there's a lot of, a lot of things. Um, I have to navigate this in a specific way. So there is a lot going on, but what I want to focus on today is just how much information we have access to and how now more than ever, our intuition is so important and it's most important now than ever. So 
As we know, kundalini builds our intuition because our pineal gland and our pituitary gland are in charge of our intuition. They help to activate that. And if those of you who don't know what intuition is, it is that divine knowing within you, that gut feeling, that inner knowing that no matter what the facts say, you know what is your truth. And that can be different for everyone else. So intuition is just that gut instinct of what you know in your mind and in your body. And we may have felt this through relationships. We may have felt this through interactions with family. That We may have felt this with jobs. We may have felt this with our health. But we have this innate sense. And that sense is one of the most important senses that we can have during these times on the planet. So kundalini helps to activate the glandular system, activating the pituitary gland and the pineal gland so that we can enhance our intuition. And some of you may even feel a sensation at your third eye point while you meditate or in the back of your head for like the opening of that space. And um, the pineal gland is a gland that can often be calcified due to environmental reasons, due to things we consume, things we're surrounded by. And by going plant-based or eating mostly organic plants, um, eating a very healthy diet, consuming less toxins from the environment, from our cleaning products or whatever it may be, and also um, meditating, we can enhance our intuition and decalcify the pineal gland. And from there, we just feel clearer and we are more tuned in to our essence and our divine self. So during the Aquarian age, we're living through a really huge fucking shift, if you haven't noticed. So this is all, what I'm sharing today is from a lot of the teachings from Kundalini that's been predicted in the 80s and 90s, and also what I know to be true and what my intuition tells me. And again, my truth may be different than your truth. You don't have to agree with everything I say, um, but I'm just sharing from my personal practice, my knowledge in Kundalini and the Aquarian Age and what I've come to know is true. So what I believe is happening is a massive shift from 3D to 4D into 5D. So 3D, some symptoms, evidence of 3D is that polarized right and wrong, this versus that. Um, And we saw a lot of that in 2020, and we still see a lot of that online, on social media. It's intense. And as we go into 4D, we start to think maybe there's like a bigger meaning here. Maybe everything happens for a reason. Maybe there's no such thing as coincidences, leaning more into love and into the heart center. And as we move more into 5D, that's actually known as heaven on earth. So creating this space of heaven, of bliss, of ecstasy while we're here on earth. And I have 100% experienced that. I'm not saying that I live in the 5D 24-7, but um, I know that to be true. I've experienced it and it is just a state of divine bliss. And the deeper I go in my practice, the more aligned and true I stay to myself, the more I'm able to get into that space. So unfortunately, um, Not everyone enters into the 5D or experiences an awakening at the same time. And we're all part of a collective universal (laughs) energy. So that being said, um, we all are working together. It's almost like being on a sports team and the players on the sports team are developing these like features and abilities, some before others. And sometimes the ones that are developing that strength can get frustrated with the other people. Like you're not working hard enough or you're not able to do this yet. You need to work harder or you, or I'm better than you because you can't do this. And that is not the case. Everyone has to awaken at their own time and their own divine time. And yes, we can 100% do things to activate our awakening, <clears throat> kundalini, and eating more plants. But um, for the most part, it's part of a divine plan. And a lot of us who feel like we're awakened and we really are dipping into that 5D space, we're here to hold the light. We're here to help others awaken. And that doesn't mean by talking down to anyone, their viewpoints and their 
opinions. It means just being a beacon of light and spreading love and keeping the frequency high on the planet so that we can do so, so that we can raise the collective vibration. So if I feel like I'm vibrating high in 5D all the time, I can help raise the collective vibration by teaching Kundalini to a group of people. And that starts a ripple effect. They go out and they see however many people each day and they spread that light and so on and so on. And even if you're not a teacher, you can st- you're can you still holding the light and sharing that space. So it is a very intense time on the planet. And the reason why it has to be so intense is because people have to experience certain challenges on their own so they can get to that space. And I want to say elevated space, but it doesn't mean it's higher than anyone else. We're not judging anyone's existence or the place that they're at. We're all on this journey together. At one time, I was so not awakened to my true essence and... um the things I would have said during that time and how I would have acted and maybe had judgments or jealousy or lower vibrational feelings. And I never want to judge myself for that. So that's why we don't want to judge anyone else for where they're at. But we're going through a very massive shift. There's a ton of light energy coming towards earth. And the really cool thing about this time is that by committing to a high vibrational practice, you are able to ascend so much faster than people who started this journey five years ago because the energy on the planet is moving so quickly and it's helping you with this ascension. And you can see it on social media. Like when I first started Evolve, Kundalini was like super woo-woo and out there and I didn't know anyone practicing it. And now I hear about it all the time. There are so many healers stepping into their power, sharing their gifts. There are so many people open to holistic healing and just spiritual energetic healing now more than ever. So we're seeing the evidence of this. It's so amazing to watch. And the times that we're living in can feel really freaking heavy and really, really intense. And I would be lying if I said there were days where I was like... I don't know about this place. There's got to be a better place. Like Earth, you're like freaking me out right now. I I think I'd rather be somewhere else. And of course, like not acting upon that, but not in a dark way. Just I think it's normal to just feel the weight of the world these days and the heaviness of it. And um, I do think that we chose a faster timeline to that 5d heaven on earth i do think that there are going to be some things that heat up a bit and we're going to see more of that duality and that polarization um, as i spoke about before but overall i think we chose a faster timeline and just to go into timelines quickly if you're just hearing about that term now um nothing's written for sure because we can live a life of fate or we could step into destiny and kundalini helps us to step into destiny but we're always choosing different timelines so I think as a collective, we chose a higher frequency and we surpassed some of the the darker, challenging times that was on a different timeline and a different path, if that makes sense. So I do think, I, I am feeling positive and optimistic about where we're going, but I think that we will still have some challenges and people are going to be faced with experiences to really figure out and choose Um, what is most in alignment with themselves. And another lesson that's coming through during the Aquarian age is some people are doing things that are out of alignment with their truth just to, um, you know, do what they've been told or do what they have been doing for so many years or do what most of the people are saying they should do, whether it's about a job or a personal choice, whatever it might be. And By doing that, that lesson's just going to come again down the road. You're just going to be experienced with that down the road. So it doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just this journey of really finding out who we truly are, who we're really meant to be and stepping into that. And that's why you're seeing so many people change jobs or start their own business or move because we're being pushed and pressed and squeezed so that we can find the life we're truly meant to live. So during the Aquarian age, you can experience a great deal of um, 
overwhelm just from the amount of information that you're consuming. Um, Your nervous system can feel like it's on overdrive. You might feel uninspired. You might feel disconnected to your um, divine feminine or your sexual energy. You might feel tired and lethargic a lot. And these are all things that we can experience during these times. And I want to help give you some suggestions to help you through because we can thrive. There's no reason why we shouldn't thrive during this time. And I have suggestions for you. So before I do that, I want to stop for a moment and just give a shout out to Eaton Hemp um, because they are the sponsors of this podcast. And I'm so grateful that they are the sponsors, that they believed in Evolve by Erica, the podcast. And I love what they do. So I'm just going to grab for those of you on YouTube, you could see I have their Eaton Hemp hearts here. So they make bites, but I showed them in the last episode. I really wanted to highlight these eat and hump hearts. They're organic, sustainable, non-GMO. And they, I love putting these on anything. My toast in smoothies to add some extra protein and nutrients. But I also love making my own fresh hemp milk out of this because those milks that we buy in the grocery stores are sketchy and they have things that can just really calcify our pineal glands. So when we have these clean, organic, non-GMO hemp hearts, we can make really delicious, protein-filled, clean plant milk and hemp milk. So I love this brand. I highly recommend checking them out. You can visit their website at Eaton Hemp. That's E-A-T-O-N-H-E-M-P.com and use code ERICA30 for 30% off of your purchase. The bites I take everywhere with me. I love them. They're like that sweet treat, but with zero guilt and all nourishment and nutrients. Um, And like I said, I love these for bowls, for toast, for smoothies smoothies for my milk. Um, Check them out, eatenhemp.com and Erica30 for 30% off your order. So getting back to the Aquarian age and the age of information, it is so necessary now more than ever to really be taking time for self-care. And I know self-care is something that like we're inundated with as well. And sometimes that could even feel overwhelming. I don't know about you, but it's like, okay, so I have to wake up and I have to meditate and I also have to guasa and then I have to dry brush and then I have to um, do a body lymphatic drainage. And then I have to, you know, it could feel really overwhelming too, but don't let it. So finding self-care that fuels you rather than depletes you, that feels really good for you. Time off the screen doing this. So whether it's taking a bath with essential oils or a bath bomb, whether it's making time for your morning meditation or your evening meditation, or literally just taking a break to listen to a sound bowl healing on Spotify during the day, finding time for self-care, finding time to step away from the screens and really just be within. Guys, there are so many distractions. There's social media, there's the TV, there's apps, there's, we are bombarded with information and we have to be careful of the information we're consuming because we are being programmed by whatever we're consuming. Right now, this is what I intend to be a very positive, uplifting, inspiring program that can help you release programs that are holding you back from your highest self. But there are other programs out there that can keep you small, that can feed into your limiting beliefs. And When I watch TV, it's so clear to me when I see commercials or um, mostly the commercials on some of the mainstream television, it's like, holy moly, this is wild. If I didn't have like a crystal clear pineal gland, I might be going and getting fast food right now, or I might be making this other life choice that wouldn't feel good to me. So be conscious of what you consume and have a limit to it. So something that I'm going to start practicing is by 8.45 p.m., I am ditching electronics. And 
that could be hard for me because I love you guys. And my Evolve members, I like to get back to you like as soon as possible. I love talking. I love connecting. And I love helping you in a timely fashion. But what I realized over the past few months, especially now that I'm not teaching and I work for myself and I'm able to make my own schedule, I was staying up later. I was on my um, phone a lot more, scrolling at night or watching things that I really didn't need to be watching before going to bed. And that will just get me going all of a sudden 40 minutes passes and you've been in like a rabbit hole of God knows what. And the amount of time that was being wasted in front of my screen was just really mind blowing. So I was so happy once I committed to myself, um, I saw huge hours shaved off my daily screen time, hours um, from one week to another because of this commitment I made to myself. So that might be something you want to try having a time where that's it. An alarm goes off on your phone. It's time for you to put your phone away. It's time for you to read a book. It's time for you to sit and listen to a sound healing. It's time for you to get under the covers and just be, try to go to bed um, because it's very draining, whether you realize it or not. And so we have some self-care. We have time off the screen. Also time with our loved ones, connecting with them face-to-face, trying to ditch the electronics when we're having those really important moments of human contact because I don't know about you, but there are actually times where I come off my phone and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Like I'm here. Oh wow. Like I'm here in the physical world. Like I almost feel so consumed in that space that I almost forget where I am. Like I'm not grounded. So taking time to be in person, and if it's someone who likes you to be in their aura, touching and holding and maybe hugging and kissing, um, depending if you know if they're comfortable with that and you being so close and into their aura, but human connection is so important now more than ever. Um, listening to your intuition, so continuing to build your intuition with your practice and listening to it and really tuning into that space and trying to shut out the noise, being really in tune with yourself and who you are meant to be is very important too. So just leaning into that space, doing things that rejuvenate you rather than deplete you because technology is incredible. I love being able to connect with anyone from Zoom during the day through my one-on-one meditations to project out all these meditations to you guys, but there's such importance in also coming away from the screen, grounding back into the earth, spending more time in nature, getting outside for the sunrise or the sunset. So important during these times. It's really good for our eye health and our brain health to go out and see the colors and the lights that are released during sunrise and sunset. It's really healthy for us. And when we're in front of blue light, that really messes with our circadian rhythm and our brain health. So making time to get that natural light into the body through the eyes, feeling it, consuming it is so healthy and important as well. So these are just some tips that I wanted to share for living through the Aquarian age. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any others. One rule of the Aquarian age is understanding that the other person is you. So having compassion, we're all one. We all make one consciousness. We're all from the same creator, no matter where we're from, where we were born, what religion we are, what race we are. We are all from the same creator. And when we could really tune into that and understand that and feel that we're able to come from a place of so much more compassion for one another. So being able to tune into that space, understanding that we are one of the same, we come from the same source. And when someone says something that you don't agree with or you're triggered by, go back to that. And again, when someone does trigger something within you, that is an opportunity to learn and uncover and really expand. So always ask yourself, what is this bringing up in me? Why do I feel discomfort right now? Why do I feel defensive? What is it in me that feels it needs to come out? So taking time to do that. And also there is one more thing I wanted to say, another suggestion about the Aquarian age. And a suggestion of 
Um, well, I guess I wanted to share that there's so much truth and studies and research and what we really need right now is our intuition. Cause as I said before, there's something to prove any point that you have. So taking time to have compassion for others who might have a strong, um, view or a strong opinion and just not judging and understanding that their opinion and their viewpoint is from their experience. And it's not any better or worse than yours. Yours is not any better or worse than anyone else's. Just really understanding without judgment that We are all making decisions based off of our personal experiences and our life and the experiences that we've had in our life and maybe the conditioning that we've been under, things we've been taught. I promise you, everyone is trying their best right now. I think I truly believe that we're at a point in our life where a point in this evolution where everyone's trying their best and that's where a lot of the heat and the tension comes from because everyone just wants things to get better. Everyone just wants to create this better world, whatever that means to you in whatever way. And Everyone's super, super passionate and fired up about creating the best earth and having just this ideal situation in every way, peace, love, equality, all of the things that every single person deserves. So I do believe that we come from different sides at times and it feels like we're one against the other, but we're really not because I think at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We're just seeing it in a different way and it takes a lot of listening, a lot more lesson, listening and a lot more output, a lot less output, a lot more listening, a lot more understanding and a lot more compassion for us to come together as a whole. So those are my little nuggets of inspiration um, and some information about the Aquarian Age. I actually have a course on all about the Aquarian Age, specific meditations that are going to help you through this time of over-information um, to help you to strengthen your nervous system because it's playing a toll on your nervous system. So being able to strengthen the nervous system, be able to handle so much in- information, be able to decalcify the pineal gland, activate the intuition, and really come into alignment with your divine essence. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check that out on my website in the shop. It's called the Aquarian Energy Group. And if you use the code Aquarian, you will get 20% off. So use the code Aquarian and you'll get 20% off. It will bring you through really powerful meditations that were created specifically in like the 80s. Um, Well, they're ancient practices, but in the 80s is when they started to talk about this and suggest these practices for these specific times we're living through. So if you're feeling any of the symptoms of what I expressed, I think that would be a great program for you. Use code Aquarian and you'll get 20% off. I hope that you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for being here during this time. We chose to live throughout this time. We chose, it is my belief that we chose to be here. And I often say, although I shared with you how dark and heavy it could feel sometimes, I often say, what an exciting time to be alive. We are shifting the collective. We're shifting the earth. We're bringing in so much light energy and so much love. Wow, I'm so grateful to be here during these times. And that's how I transmute that energy of heaviness. So I hope you could find that space. I am so grateful that you're here on earth with us doing this work and showing the way for so many people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sat Nam. And may the long time sun shine upon you. May all love surround you. And may the pure light within you guide your way on. So much love, Sat Nam. Mwah.